The following content is provided by a I Am Refocused radio contributor. Pastor Vera McEwen with Love God Ministries will be sharing today's message. And now, here is your host, Pastor Vera McEwen. This is the year of more, 2024. More wisdom, more well-being, and more wealth. Let us listen to the scriptures. I will be reading from Exodus 20th chapter 1 to 17. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them for I the Lord thy God am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and shewing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remembering the Sabbath day to keep it holy, six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, Thou not thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. I will be reading from the book of Psalm. Chapter 19, verse 1. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. God is the God of wealth. God is the God of wisdom. God is the God of wellness. When we dive into the psalm, Psalm 19, we learn and recognize that God, God is the God who provides freedom, the God who provides glorious loving kindness. Day after day, it says that they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth. Their words to the end of the world in the heavens god has pitched a tent for the sun it is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber like a companion rejoicing to run the course it rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other Nothing is deprived of its warmth. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise 
the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than more pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. By them, your servant is warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. But who, who can discern their own errors? Forgive, God, forgive. Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me, then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgression. May, may these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my Redeemer. I will be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 18 through 25. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world be wisdom new, not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews, a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness, but unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks. Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God is, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. I will be reading from John, second chapter, 13th through the 22nd verse. And the Jews' Passover was at hand. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changes of money sitting. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changes money and overthrew the tables and said unto them that sold doves, take these things hence, make not my father's house a house of merchandise. And his disciple remembered that it was written, the zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. I then answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign showest thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? But he spoke of the temple of his body, where therefore he was risen from the dead. His disciples remembered that he had said this unto them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. This year, this year we consider wise, well, and wealthy as our entrance into a time, a time of more. I am so happy to introduce the wealth of the universe to you this day. 
I am so excited to introduce to you this day the substance of who you are. This substance that when you put all these three together, wisdom, well-being, specifically mental well-being, and of course, wealth, that you have who you are as God created you, but also who God is. The minute we get deep into this discussion, your mind is going to be like, that is in not possible, Pastor Beer. This is not, what you're saying is not fathomable, but it is. And the way that you can glean onto it, hold onto it, and keep it for yourself is to memorize these verses that I'm going to give you this day. First, I want you to turn all the way back to Genesis. In Exodus today, we were given the commandments. These commandments tell us how we are to behave as the very substance of God so that we can be this glorious, glorious receiver and transmitter of wisdom, this glorious receiver and transmitter of well-being, this glorious receiver and transmitter of wealth. You might be thinking today, you're just going to tell me about wealth as it relates to Jesus or something like that. You're not going to tell me about true fortune. Today, we're going to begin our three-week journey around being wealthy and true fortune. Are you at Genesis? Genesis chapter 1. In Genesis chapter 1, I want you to read this aloud with me. Genesis chapter 1. Beginning in verse 26, I'm reading from the New International Version. Then God, that's easy to remember, right? Then God, then God said, then God said, let us in community is what he's saying, with community being with the spirit, community being with the word made flesh, community being with God. I like to call the three, if you've read my book, Wade with the Women of the Word, I'd like to call the three way, wisdom, and word. God says, let us, let us make human beings. Let us make you, Braylon. Let us make you, Deborah. Let us make you, Dante, let us make human beings in what does it say there? Read that with me, Tiffany. What does this, this is so important, Doris. Read it with me. It says, let us in community make human beings in what? Our image. Let's stop there. You can memorize this right now. Let us in community make human beings in our image. Then the Lord said, let us make human beings in our image. Let's continue, Jake. In our likeness. Repeat that with me. In our likeness. That means, Marie, that means little Sophie and Dewey, that means, Dewey, that you are the very image of God in God's likeness. I'm pausing because I want you to glean what that really means. Tommy, you are created in the very image of God. You are created in the very likeness of God in triune. Now we've talked a lot about how the spirit lives within us. 
Your DNA is Deborah, the very DNA of God. So that they may be over the fish of the sea, the bird of the sky, over the livestock and the wild animals, and over the creatures that move along the ground so that we can be stewards of the earth. You were created in the very image, in the very likeness of God. Say this with me. I am. I am. I am created. I am created in the very image, in the very likeness of God. Why are we saying this? If the message is about more wealth, because you have to get in your mind that you are capable of more wealth, that you deserve more wealth, that more wealth is a part of your DNA. You were created in the very image of God, which means you are a creator. I am, let's say it again. I am created in the image of God, in the image of God, in the very likeness of God. Let's read verse 27. Because 27 reinforces, restates this, because again, what we're going to dive into in this journey on wealth and wellness and wisdom in community, what we're going to dive into specifically on being wealthy has to be repeated. So write that down. I am created in the image, in the likeness of God. Write that down. Memorize that. It says it in the very first chapter of the word of God. And here in verse 27, it restates that. So God, it says, created you, created me in the very image of God. In the image of God, God created them, it says. That's you and me, them, all of us. It says, male and female, God created them. I am created in the image of God. I am created in the likeness of God. For you to be wise, you glean in on God's word that tells you what wisdom is, where it comes from, and how you arise to be well. You glean the word, you read the word, you introduce yourself to the word so that your mental well-being, your physical well-being, your social well-being, and your spiritual well-being can be founded on the word, which is in the very first chapter tells you who you are. to receive the wealth of the universe. You glean the word of God, the substance of God, in the very first chapter of the word of God. This is Women's History Month. Women's History Month is a time where we think on, meditate on, and remember and glean in on the women. The women who we cherish, the women who we know, the women who paved a way, the women whose shoulders we stand on. And today I am here standing on one of the women one of the women of the word of God. I stand upon her, Eve. I stand upon them, Sarah. I stand upon them, 
Rebecca, Rachel, Miriam. Yes, I stand with them, O oh, Holy Bama. As we glean understanding, these women were wealthy women. We learn in Genesis of the wealth of Eve as she moves through time and space. We learn of the, hmm, the wealth of Sarah and how not only was she wealthy, but she brought even more wealth to her brother and her husband wherever she went. Kings, pharaohs were giving her livestock, money, servants, thus increasing, increasing her household. As many of you know, I read the word of God every morning before I rise out of bed. I listen to it during the day if I'm not able to read it. But I like to lay in bed and read my favorite book. Read my book is what I call it. My book, which is the word of God. And every evening for years, I read this book. This book is by a woman. This book is by a woman who for generations have created a mindset that speaks of being a substance, a substance within the universe founded on the word of God and Abraham and Isaac. And of course, with ever, whenever there's Abraham and Isaac, we have Rebecca and Sarah and Rachel and all of the matriarchs as well as the patriarchs. And how their substance mindset created wealth for them. Catherine Ponder, Dr. Catherine Ponder wrote this book, The Millionaires of Genesis, their prosperity secrets for you many years ago. In addition, she founded the Unity Church. She is a pastor, a doctor, she is an author. She was born in 1927, and she continues to write her newsletter today. I want to read from her book because it is through her book that I memorized so many health and wellness and, of course, wealth knowledge sayings which brought me to where I am today. I would read these folded pages and you can see how dirty and, and read this book is. These I've written in the pages. I would read these pages every day and I wrote in the very back something that I have to re read out loud because I was reading this recently and I'm like, I forgot that I wrote that. This was the year 2018. My daughter was going to the University of Southern California. I didn't have a great job. I didn't have all the funds that I needed. I was in seminary, working through seminary, working um, to get my master's degree in theology, as well as trying to make sure that she was well paid for and well, well established at University of Southern California. And I tell you, I love my daughter. She didn't get a scholarship. And no, I wasn't one of those parents who bought her in. What happened? was I became enthralled in trying to pay this debt, this 60,000, sometimes $80,000 debt of school without having her having to pay any student loans after. And I remember coming to this crossroads, this crossroads where I could not make the payment. And what did I do? Well, these sayings that Catherine Ponder had written down ran through my head every night, and I'd read it every night. And I'm looking at this page specifically. And I look here to see that when I was praying and opening my mind and continually focusing on Jesus, God, and the wealth, the way, wisdom and the word that 
75% of her tuition that year came to me, came to me in a gift. This gift was so great, I manifested it out of nothing. And the remaining 25%, I could pay out of my income. That is something to rejoice about. I'm gonna read one of the folded down pages that I instilled in my mind and in my memory because what? I am created in the very image of God, in the very likeness of God, which means I can create out of nothing. On this folded down page, it says, I am wealthy. I am this rich, radiant substance of the universe. I am, I am, I am. My mind, body, and financial affairs are now filled with the rich universal substance. Every phase of my life is now blessed with this radiant substance. What are you filling your mind with? First, you need to fill your mind with the mindset of God. God is the wealthy being. God is the amazing being. When we read about who God is in relationship to wealth in Malachi 3.17, God describes God as self in triune, as sugala in the Hebrew, sugala. And that is the God of wealth, the God of possessions, the God of property, the God of treasure, the God of gold, the God of silver, the God that we worship, the God in triune, whom we are made in the very image of, is Sugala. That means that you are Sugala too. Catherine Ponder writes of herself in her book, The Millionaires of Genesis. I started writing about the inner laws of prosperity at a time when I was living in one room. I felt ridiculous telling other people how to be prosperous while I was still living in only one room. But I realized that I had to expand my prosperity consciousness in order to break out of such a narrow world. And that the best way to expand was by thinking, affirming, teaching and writing about abundance. A gleaner is one who collects good gradually. If necessary, I found that the only way to get out of that one room was bit by bit. As I quietly blessed it, beautified it, and lived a prosper prosperously as possible in it. It became easier to picture something better. That method worked. I moved from that one room into a beautiful new church, Mons in Alabama. It was not mine, but living in it was a step forward. Later, I lived in a series of apartments in Austin, Texas. Each was nicer than the previous one. As I blessed each one and fixed it up bit by bit. This method led me to my first home in San Antonio, Texas. A Mexican hacienda, which I filled with custom made furniture from Mexico. Later in Palm Springs, California, I bought 
and redecorated a larger home that had once been owned by a famous show business personality. But none of these blessings came to me suddenly or all at once. They came bit by bit as I persisted. The axiom, you become what you want by affirming that you already are. You are already made in the image of God. You're already made in the likeness of God. That means that you are already made a wise, well, wealthy being. I think about I think about this glorious new day and where I am and where I can be as I affirm who I am every day my life morphs and changes bit by bit first I want you to know in your wisdom as you establish this it is not a sin to be wise. It is not a sin to be well. It is not a sin to have wealth. The only sin is the blasphemy of unbelief. If you believe what God says about you, then you are wise. You are well, and mm, you, you are already wealthy. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Hey, it's Shemai Reed with I Am Refocus Radio. Make sure you go to IamRefocusRadio.com to listen to today's episode. Once again, like we always say, keep God first, stay focused, and peace. Peace.